tuia te papa e oraki nei. Tuia te mukatanga te kārunga te pō kārunga te o. Tihei mauriu. Ka huri atu au ki te kupu a ngā tīpuna, te pēnei ana, koe koe te kōkō, e kete kete te kākā, e kūkū te kereru. Koe a rā ngā manu o te ngā here, i rungi a rua hene maunga, e mihi atu ana ki a koutou kua piri mai ki tēnei. Ki tēnei kaupapa, āhia Aotearoa, piri mai. Nō reira, ko tēnei te kupu o te kūnina ki pūrehu roa me ngā papa ako e toru, o te hā turitea pokiahu, e mihi atu ana ki a koutou, whakatau ana ki a koutou i tēnei o ngā kaupapa. Nō reira, nō mai haramai. Nō mai haramai, ka whakaaro hea e rā ko ngaro atu te tirohanga kānohi rātou ki a rātou, ka huri mai ki a tātou te kānohi ora tēnā anō tātou. We combine the celestial energies to the terrestrial energies and the human fibres of people and then so they resound in the night and resound through the day and then behold the breath of life. I'm utilising a proverbial saying of the ancestors where we say, koi koi te koko, kete kete te kākā, kūkū te kereru. As the tui bird sings, as the brown parrot chatters, and as the pigeon coos, it reminds us that it takes all sorts to make a world. Everyone has their own language, everyone has their own voice. So with that, I welcome you all here from Massey University and the three campuses at Otiha, Puditea and Pukiahu. And for those uh, who are joining in, we ask that the mountains, your mountains join in with the Ruahine and your rivers join with Manawatu. The waters carry off the tears of those who passed on before us, and we come back to us who are living, the living uh, descendants of those passed away. With that, uh, Penny, uh, the team from uh, Massey, and those who are organising it, I welcome you all, and uh, enjoy the conference. Nō reira tēnā koutou, hui hui mai nei, tēnā koutou, ki ora no tātou katoa. Ki ora hone, nga mihi ki a koe. Tēnā koto, tēnā koto, tēnā koto, tato, kato. Nga o mai haere mai ki raro te tuanui o tēne o whare. Welcome, esteemed guests, to Palmerston North, to Massey University, for our conference today. Esteemed guests, Emeritus Professor Sheka Badorpachi, Professor Natasha Hamilton Hart, Associate Professor Jason Young, Dr. Patrick Thompson, Pro Vice Chancellor, Professor Cynthia White, Associate Professor Hone Morris, New Zealand Asia President, Associate Professor James Beatty, welcome you all here today. Nago mai, hairu mai, yō koso irashaimashita. We take great pleasure in welcoming you to the 24th Biennial New Zealand Asian Studies Society International Conference held for the first time online. Since we last met in November 2019, the world has become a very different place. We have all experienced a vacuum of expectations, a different way of being, working and researching, and deprivation and disruption of various kinds. I sincerely hope that your experience has been at the lower end of the scale. But we have come through and we are here today, gathered together once more, although virtually, to share research to, into the ever diversifying area of Asian studies. We will hear presentations from the furthest reaches of what we call Asia, from Central Asia to the POW, Prison of War Camps in Featherston, New Zealand. We have a very exciting and intriguing lineup of papers for you. Before we move on to the next phase of our program, I would like to express our deep gratitude to the New Zealand Asia Executive Committee, James and Naima, for your unflagging support and encouragement. To my colleagues on the organizing committee and for their brilliant ideas especially Robert Andrews, 
my assistant convener for her unshakable support and advice. To the Massey University College of Humanities and Social Sciences and the office staff of the School of Humanities, Media and Creative Communications for all their support in organizing this conference. And we would also like to express our sincere appreciation to our general sponsors who have cooperated with the various changes in our program and continued to uh, extend a helping hand. I'd like to thank the Nicholas Tarling Charitable Trust, the Asia New Zealand Foundation, Victoria University of Wellington, New Zealand Contemporary China Research Centre, Victoria University of Wellington, New Zealand India Research Centre, and Utgita Kanda Gamelan Ensemble of Canterbury University, who we can look forward to listen, listening to and watching very soon. We hope you will sit back in the comfort of your own space and enjoy the conference and the range, depth and insights of the speakers. I will now hand over the screen to Professor Cynthia White, Pro Vice Chancellor of the College of Humanities and Social Sciences at Massey University for her, her opening address. Thank you. Nā mai, haere mai. Tēnā koutou. <coughs> tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, <coughs> tēnā tātou katoa. <coughs> excuse me, excuse me, colleagues. Um, welcome everyone to this virtual conference to Massey University and to a very rich program over several days. I'll begin with a personal reflection. Um, it's a particular pleasure for me to join you all today because when I was a young scholar, I attended one of the earliest New Zealand Asian Studies conferences in Christchurch and presented on my early research on the learning strategies of New Zealand students learning a wide range of, of languages. Um, it was, I found it a very hospitable community. I found the papers incredibly interesting. And I'm going to return to that theme um, in a moment or just at the end. <clears throat> but to speak about the conference theme here, Change, Disruptions and Resilience, it's an excellent uh, focus for this particular conference. We could look at this from many levels, from uh, Asian philosophy, where we can describe um, Buddha as some sort of genius who focused on the human condition and seeing it as essential to that change, disruptions and resilience based on the human mind. We can look at this theme from a historical perspective, um, economic perspectives, language perspectives, and so on. But I think it's been chosen because of the immediate challenges we've faced in the last 18 months, two years, which um, Penny has already referred to. And I think, think we can usefully think about change, disruptions, and resilience in three arenas in the local, so in the local Asia context, um, virtually, how the virtual world has been transformed and challenged in these times, and globally. So the connections that we can forge with the local via virtual networks. So I think this is a very rich lens to bring to the question of Asian studies in New Zealand. I, one other point I wish to make is that this, the Asian Studies Conference, from my perspective, was always about interconnected networks, not only within New Zealand, but internationally and with research sites within Asia. So it's wonderful to see the conference and the networks continuing. This is particularly important at this time as we have learned like never before that our world is deeply interconnected. And I think the work behind this conference speaks to our need to be very generous at this time in maintaining and sharing our networks when many young scholars have had their opportunities displaced. Of course, all scholars have had their opportunities displaced, but 
particularly for, for scholars who are trying to grow their careers. Uh, events, if there were not events such as this, it would be very much more challenging. So I think uh, the, the hope, the, this conference itself speaks to change, disruptions and resilience. So I'd like to acknowledge the conference organisers and the excellent programme that has been put together today. And uh, I won't say very much more because I, like you, I think I'm very much looking forward to hearing the gamelan. I, my own connections with Asia are uh, in the late 70s. I was a lecturer at Victoria University and had um, taught large cohorts of Asian students, spent quite a lot of time in Asia myself, um, particularly Indonesia. So I'm very much looking forward to hearing the, the gamelan in the moment, which I'm sure will bring back many strong memories. So to you all, I wish you a wonderful conference and congratulate you once more on the energy and resilience which has made this event possible. So ngā mihi nui kia koutou. Ngā mihi nui, Cynthia. I'm now going to hand over to the President of New Zealand Asia, uh, Associate Professor James Beatty. James. Kia ora tato. To James Beatty taku ingoa. He pere te hini aho na Aotearoa Asian Studies Society. So my name is James Beatty, and I'm President of NZ Asia. I'm imagining um, Cynthia is just over here. Professor Cynthia White, PVC Humanities and Social Sciences, Associate Professor Hone Morris, Office of DVC Māori, Dr. Penny Shino, distinguished guests, keynote speakers, and conference delegates. I'm delighted to be here virtually in my capacity as president to give the vote of thanks today um, for launching our 24th Biennial International Conference. This is a very exciting moment, as Cynthia's just said, at a particularly opportune time to engage in debate on Asia. And it's wonderful COVID notwithstanding that we're all still able to meet and to be able to share our research. This is vitally important. I'd like to pay particular thanks to Dr. Shino and her organizing committee for rising to the extraordinary challenges of running NZ Asia's first fully online um, conference. So thank you so much for this mammoth effort. I'd also like to thank the sponsors of our conference and also to our keynote guests. I'm aware that um, Penny has already um, mentioned them, but I'll also list them here. I'd also like to extend my warm thanks to my colleagues on the executive committee, and especially Naima Talib, who stepped up as acting president while I've been on parental leave and who has been responsible for organizing and judging the new book awards, which were announced last night. And it was just thrilling to hear how much research is going on. And also more importantly, that um, our colleagues are sharing that research with us all. Finally then, I'd like to warmly welcome all of you from near and far. And I wish you a very happy, intellectually rewarding and engaging conference. Kia ora. Kia ora, James. So now it's my great pleasure to introduce the Ukgita, sorry, the Uk, Utgita Kanda Gamelan Ensemble, uh, directed by Imade Katawan. Yeah. Now, before the performance starts, um, Imade Katawan is going to uh, give us a little introduction to Gamelan. So over to you, Imade. Thank you, Renee. First of all, uh, good uh, morning, everyone. Om Swastiastu, Om Awigenam Asunamasidam. First of all, thank you for giving me an uh, opportunity to introduce the UC Gamelan group. I am Made Kartawan. I am studying for a doctoral of musical art at the University of Canterbury, and I'm also Gamelan instructor for UC Gamelan group. UC Gamelan Ensemble is a student and community-based balanced Gamelan music and dance group from the University of Canterbury. The University of Canterbury purchased a set of Gender Wayang and Gong Kebiar Gamelan in 1995 
And Kendewa Yang Ensemble is one of the smallest ensembles in Bali and most often consists uh, of four instruments split into two pairs, a pair of pomade, larger and lower pits, and a pair of barangan, smaller and higher pits. This ensemble is played in various performance contexts, including secular and religious. And the gamelan gong kebiar is a set of instruments that is mainly comprised of percussion instruments. The gong kebiar features a pelog, five notes, scale spanning four octaves. The bronze metalopons appear in the tuning to produce a characteristic shimmering tone and the musician often perform complex interlocking rhythmic patterns. The music can be extremely dynamic and varied in tempo depending on interaction between the, the dancer and the lead drummer. From 1996, the University of Canterbury Ensemble Banyu Kunyung Salju was formed and gave performances from 1996 to 2007. It was reformed in 2017 by Made Katawan and Justin De Hurt, and now performs under the name of Udgita Chanda, UC Gambala. Since then, the UC Gambala has performed at Lincoln Culture Festival, Christchurch Botanic Garden, Southern Culture Festival, Little Drum Festival, Turana Library, Great Hall Center, and the Piano, Chinese Culture, Culture Festival, Thailand Culture Festival, and Indonesian Culture Festival. The music is mostly thought through the traditional methods called Maguru Pangul, Maguru Kuping, and Maguru Rasa. Maguru Pangul literally means teachings with the mallet. In this way, the students pay attention to the hand and mallet movement of the teacher before imitating the, the movements themselves. Maguru Kuping literally means learning by ears. It is learning a musical pattern as an oral process. Students listen first and then play back what is heard. Maguru Rasa means learning by feeling. It is a practical method of teaching musicianship that is built upon the ability of students to understand and then convey their feeling to the, mu the music and emotional expression. A simple notation using number is also a
Thank you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Nami Hinui. Uh, so now it gives me great pleasure to pass over the screen to my colleague Ruben Azizian of Massey University, who is going to be introducing our keynote speaker for today. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, Professor Natasha Hamilton Hart of Auckland University, uh, who will be talking on the topic in search of Southeast Asia, New Zealand. So over to you, Ruben. 